All right, cardiovascular pathology today. I haven't gotten to pulmonary pathology yet. It's week eight, it's Tuesday. It's fall. It's not the fall. It's the winter of 2021. Here we go. Tough subject today. Well, we're going to start talking about the mean electrical axis and what, to, how to, how to know if someone's MEA is normal or not, and what abnormal can look like. So let's finish up. We just started talking about the kind of the physics of of ECG, and let's meet the six limb leads. So we haven't. We're just starting the leads now, and these are important. So there's three standard and three augmented leads. So there's six limb leads, three standard, three augmented. The standard ones are the ones that have been around forever. They're the ones that you used in first quarter in physiology based on Eitoven's triangle. Uh, right leg is always the ground. So these we're going to use these over and over again. Limb lead one, um, that has an angle of orientation of zero. We'll, we'll go over that angle of orientation wheel here in a second. That's all you need to know. Limb lead one, angle of orientation is zero. The all limb leads view the heart from a coronal plane. Or you could say they view the heart from the periphery of a coronal plane, kind of looking down a coronal plane. Limb lead two is really the star of the show in many cases. It has an angle of orientation of 60 degrees, and this is the, arguably, it's the best or at least one of the best ways to view the heart's electrical system because it's looking, its angle of orientation or its view is coming straight down the interventricular septum where the bundle branch and the Purkinje, big Purkinje fibers are. So it's a good way to look at the heart's electrical system. It's typically used as the rhythm strip on an EKG tracing. Limb lead 3 is, has an angle of orientation of 120 degrees. Again, it's in the coronal plane. All right, and here's the angle of orient, or here's the angle, or kind of the wheel of uh, angle of orientations, where limb lead one, the camera would be looking at this way from a lateral to medial of view, looking at the heart's electrical activity. Limb lead two would be at 60 degrees, kind of looking up. Limb lead three would be 120 degrees. Remember, we said that zero degrees was right here. I think we went over this. Uh, this angle of orientation wheel last time. Um, anything this direction is negative, so this would be a negative 45. And why do we, what's the story with this wheel? We have to have a way to quantify the flow of current through the atria and the ventricles. And by putting this, making a standard wheel around the heart, uh, we can do that. We can quantify the direction of flow in accord with this wheel. You just have to memorize what the wheel is. So negative 90 would be up here. And I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but positive 90 would be right down here. 60 degrees would be right here. Right. Okay, limb lead 2 is, we already said it's the star of the show, often used as the rhythm strip. Remember in the 12K uh, in a, a 12 lead EKG tracing, which is what you get in the emergency room, and you'll do in your office if you if you venture into this uh, great service, I think, great community service to know how to do this. But you have these little snapshots of all the 12 leads. There's limb lead one, limb lead two, limb lead three, uh, AVR, AVL, AVF, and here's the chest leads, which we haven't talked about yet. Um, but down at the bottom, we have this long strip. It's not a little snapshot. It's a, And this goes on and on, right? This paper can go on for a long ways. And this is a great way to look for arrhythmias of the heart and uh, things like that. That's called the rhythm strip. And limb lead 2 is often the rhythm strip. The augmented leads, um, they're basically the same old Eitoven's triangle leads, but the computer is able to flip. Uh, the leads from positive to negative in different combinations. And so you can make three more leads out of those original three leads. Those are called the augmented leads. And we have AVL, which has an angle of orientation of negative 30. Uh, we have AVR, which has an angle of orientation of a negative 150. 
This is the only view of the right side of the heart, so this is an important lead. And we have AVF, uh, which is uh, called the peeper. It's like a peeper laying on the floor looking straight up. Uh, that's AVF. I know that's a terrible analogy, but that's the way I remember it. Uh, AVF for floor. All right, its angle of orientation is 90 degrees. All right, and there's, um, there's AVL right here. There's AVR's camera would be right here. AVL's would be right here. That's the, that's its view. And there's the peeper AVF looking straight up 90 degrees angle of orientation. All right, so lots of stars. Do I have to put any more stars? I don't think I do. I guess I could put one over here. you got to know this. You're going to be lost. You're going to miss like four or five questions if you don't know this. Um, so this is the AAO. AOO wheel, I call it, the angle of orientation wheel. And it uh, puts a map on the front of your chest, and you can use this wheel to quantify and give the exact direction of the flow through the ventricles and the atria. Right, and we already went over this, so I won't go over it again, but uh, make sure you know that. It should be noted, though, and we'll cover this again, but when we're drawing, we're going to be drawing these. Note that limb lead 1 and AVF are 90 degrees apart from each other. They're perpendicular. And limb lead AVL is 90 degrees from limb lead 2. So that's pretty neat. And I guess we should change colors. And then AVR is perpendicular, or 90 degrees, from limb lead 3. Uh, so that's really important when you're when you're drawing these things out, and you'll see what I mean here in a little while. All right, the six chest leads, we're not going to work too much with those, but they're designated as V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. They no longer view the heart from the outskirts of a coronal plane. They view the heart from the outskirts of a axial plane, so we have a different look uh, of the heart with these leads. Right, so they're kind of positioned. They're positioned around, around this plane, and they kind of run like this, and they're looking that way and that way and that way. Uh, so these, uh, for example, let's say a V3 is looking almost in A to P type direction. Um, all right. Here's another view, kind of a three-dimensional view. Uh, showing these limb leads. There's even, um, this is actually V7, 8, and 9. Uh, so this is a 15 lead AKG that uh, you can, cardiologists can use to get even more information. That's certainly way beyond our scope. Even primary healthcare providers beyond their scope as well. What are they looking for in these things? Uh, these precordial leads are good for looking at myocardial infarctions, or heart attacks, what part of the heart has been damaged. They're also great at looking at right and left bundle branch blocks. And they give us a nice view of the P wave as well. And there they are, and there, there's their locations. Uh, V1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And let's just, you can read where they are. Let's just look where they're placed. Actually setting this up is really easy because we're, we're, we're used to uh, some of these areas from the auscultation zones. So in the fourth intercostal space, at the right sternal border goes V1, and then we have V2 in the left st lower sternal border of fourth intercostal space. Then you put V4 right in the midclavicular line, almost at the, the apical impulse or the mitral auscultation area. Then you put limb lead 3 right in between those, and then you place limb lead 6 in the mid axillary line and place limb lead 5 in between that. Uh, and that's in the 6th intercostal space, 6 for 6. That's how you set that up. And here's kind of an overhead view, an axial view. We can see where they're looking. So now we have another one looking at the right side of the heart, in a little different plane, but nevertheless it's still looking at the right side of the heart. So that's V1, uh, V2. Uh, V3 is looking right down the axis, uh, right down the interventricular septum. And we can group these 
Uh, so V1 sees the right heart. V2 and 3 are said to see the interventricular septum. So V3 is seeing it better here, but some hearts uh, may, might be off a little, and the interventricular septum might be like that. So V2 and 3 are the ones uh, that are very similar to limb lead 2, actually. Uh, limb lead 4 sees the apex of the heart, the left ventricle, and V5 and V6 also see the left ventricle. So V4, 5, and 6 all look at the left ventricle. And we can group these now. Um, so limb lead 2, 3, and 4 see the anterior heart. These are called the anterior group. It's another way to group these leads. 4 and 5 see the left lateral heart, and V1 sees the right ventricle. All right, now let's get to the waves. If you're a surfer, that looks fantastic. Uh, so the parts of the EKG we remember from last quarter. Let's just go to the picture. So I expect you, I, it's understood that you know this, but we can review it real quickly. First of all, you, sometimes you guys don't know what the isoelectric line is. This is a, a zero, let's make that blue. This is zero millivolts. It's like a flat line, and that's like ground zero. Anything above that is positive. Anything below that would be negative. That wasn't very straight, but it's supposed to be straight. And yeah, that's the isoelectric line. The P wave is the first bump above, a positive waveform. This little flat segment here is the PR segment. This is very important. We'll talk and we'll actually measure these. Uh, together, the P wave and the PR segment make up the PR interval. Then we have a Q wave that is sometimes there and sometimes not. Um, and some sometimes students go, well, how come this isn't the P wave? How come it isn't the PQ interval? Because it's technically the start of the P wave and it's the end of the, or it's the beginning of the Q segment. That's because a lot of times you don't see the Q wave. It's not even there. And the first thing you'll see is a, a deflection going straight up. So you really see the R wave a lot of times and don't even see the Q wave. So therefore they gave it the name the PR segment. But it really, really runs, it, the PR segment stops at the beginning of the Q wave confusingly. Um, notice we have an up limb and a down limb too. This is the down limb of the Q wave. This is the up limb of the Q wave. This is the up limb of the mighty R wave and the down limb. Uh, once you get to the isoelectric point, it's over, so that's the Q wave. Once you go below the isoelectric line, now this is the S wave, the down limb and the up limb. Uh, and then you start the ST segment. The J point is the meeting of the up limb of the, R, the S wave and the ST segment. Normally the ST segment actually rises a tiny bit. Maybe not quite that much, but maybe that much. Um, so it's not flat like that oftentimes, and that's fine. That's not ST segment elevation. And then the T wave, of course, is repolarization of the ventricles. We're not going to worry about the U wave. All right. Uh, also notice that these waveforms, if we just work with the, which we are in this section, we're just going to worry about the QRS complex. The ventricles are the things that'll kill you. You need your ventricles running. You don't need your atria running to stay alive. So the ventricles are the star of the show. Uh, but notice we have different waveforms here. Limb lead 1. Uh, most of this is an upright waveform. Limb lead 2. Most of this is upright waveform. But look at limb lead AVR. Whoa, that's like going opposite, isn't it? Why is that? It's because the current is running away from the camera, as we'll see in a minute. And then look at AVL. It's almost a biphasic type wave. Right? So they have different, They remember last time, they have different views. The cameras all draw different descriptions of the flow of current through the heart based on their, their eyeballs, based on their view. And their view is called the angle of orientation. And again, there's that wheel. Like a third time, I think you need to know uh, that wheel, the angle of orientation wheel, their AOO wheel. Look we'll over that again. Um, so now let's make some use of this flow of current across the heart. 
remember the flow of current across the heart? What's that called? That's called the mean electrical axis. And the ventricular mean electrical axis is usually heading to the southeast here, kind of between limb lead 1 and limb lead 2. That's the normal flow. The atria mean electrical axis is a little bit more, not quite to the east, but east-southeast, I think you could call it. All right, so that's the mean electrical axis. So now let's do something with this thing. Um, and again, as I just said, it normally travels. Uh, the, and if, if you see a question that says mean electrical axis, they're talking about the ventricular mean electrical axis. Because there is an atrial, there's a left atrial mean electrical axis, a right atrial mean electrical axis, a combination mean electrical axis. When you just see mean electrical axis, it's assumed it's the combination of the right and left ventricular mean electrical axis. Uh, so watch out for that little trick. So what can we do with this? Well, we can tell the difference between left ventricular hypertrophy, which is a dangerous condition, right? You're, you've ruined your heart. Eventually, that heart is going to fail. Uh, a right ventricular hypertrophy from pulmonary hypertension. We've talked about Eisenmenger syndrome a lot. Uh, myocardial infarction. We can tell that. Uh, we can tell AFib. Um, so, brain teaser. So, if the mean electrical axis of the right ventricle is actually heading west on our our angle of orientation wheel. What, um, how come the overall is heading to the southeast? Well, it's because the left ventricle is just massive and electrically dominant. That is the story with that. It over, it just overpowers the right ventricle. All right, understanding the waveforms. So, the shape of the shape of a waveform captured on EKG paper all depends on the angle or the vision uh, that the lead is. So if you have a current running right directly at a lead, here's isoelectric line, it's always going to draw the current upright. All right. If the, if the camera is over here, there's my terrible camera. But if this, we know normally the current runs that way, it's actually going to draw, there's isoelectric line, the current will be drawn perfectly upside down. And so those are just two laws. I think you know that from last quarter, but positive waveform means that the current is moving more towards the positive lead, which is the camera. And the wave will be drawn above the isoelectric line. In other words, you have a positive waveform or an upright waveform. That means the current is coming at the camera. Got that? So you can have different flavors of these as well. So this waveform would go with this. Here's the camera looking. So if we have a wave heading straight at the camera, the the camera will, or the limb lead, will draw the waveform perfectly upright. Now, if it's coming in at an angle like this, it's not going to draw it perfectly upright. Most of it will be upright, and we'll talk, we'll expand on this in a minute, but some of it's actually going to dip below the isoelectric line and come back. So that is a biphasic. It's not perfectly biphasic, but it's a biphasic wave. So the only time you'll see a perfectly upright wave in the QRS complex is if the current is heading straight at the limb lead, at the positive electrode. So a negative waveform is exactly the opposite. It means that the current is moving away from the limb lead, and that's called a negative or a downward wave or downward deflection. Got it? And it's the same deal there. If the current, here's the camera, if the current is flowing perfectly away from the camera, you're going to get a perfectly inverted down facing or negative waveform. But if the current is running kind of at an angle, 
then you're going to get a more biphasic wave of the QRS complex. It'll be maybe a little bump up here, a little positive wave with a big negative waveform. And it all depends um, on you know, which angle. Maybe maybe this one's running, running like that. Um, if it runs, if the current runs perfectly perpendicular to the camera, then you're going to get, there's the isoelectric line, then you're going to get a perfect biphasic wave. I'll try to draw that perfect. but um, So this this will be equal to that. That means, I kind of got ahead of my slides, but that's a very important concept. And so again, if the current is moving perfectly perpendicular, uh, you get a biphasic wave. Okay, that means that the magnitude above the isoelectric line is exactly the same as the part below the, uh, the line. So in physics, there's a perfectly biphasic waveform right there. Okay, this is a monophasic wave. So this would be the, this would mean the current is heading right at the wave, or right at the camera, at the positive limb lead. This means the current is going perpendicular to the camera. That's an important concept. Now to put that on EKG terms. So here's a lead watching. Here's the flow of current heading this direction. This, this camera or this positive lead is seeing the wave move perfectly perpendicular. So it's drawn a biphasic wave. This current or this lead, number C we'll call it, it should have been drawn more like this because they have it kind of tilted so I mean technically that's off a little but if it's heading directly at limb lead C you're going to get a perfectly peaked waveform here okay and just the opposite if you have the camera over here perfectly perpendicular and the currents moving perfectly away from it you get a negative waveform. We we good with that? You have to understand that, and I think you do. Or I don't know. After those test results today, I'm hoping you guys are actually watching. Some of you need to be watching these videos. Anyway, um, almost biphasic. So now we get into the real world scenario when you have these semi biphasic waves. So if, let's go back to this picture, if the current, now we know the current is running perfectly perpendicular, right? This is 90 degrees, perfectly perpendicular, right? What if the current is moving like this? Okay, let's say it's flowing this way. Well, it's almost biphasic, but it's not quite. So you'll get a biphasic wave, but it won't be symmetrical. If the current is heading more at the electrode than, than away from the electrode, like in this scenario, um, this means that this part of the wave is going to be bigger, but this part is going to be smaller. So we can actually tell uh, by this waveform that the current is heading not perfectly biphasic because it's not; these aren't symmetrical. And because this first part is bigger than the second, we know the current is coming uh, coming toward it. And the opposite would be true, and I'm ahead of my slides again, but I can't hurt to double cover this. If the current is moving in this direction, it's going to be biphasic, but it's not going to be perfectly biphasic. This time it's moving more away from. Um, so in this scenario, you'll have more of a little positive waveform, and you'll have a much bigger negative waveform. See how that works? All right. If you understand that, you're in good shape. So almost biphasic, everything I just said. It's close to perpendicular. Um, and everything I just drew right there, you can read through that. Um, and then here's my example uh, again. So we just drew it, but we could look at it again. So there's a current. Uh, there's a limb lead, whichever. We, we'll call the, we can call this AVF if you want because it's, it's in that the angle of orientation is 90 degrees in this picture. It's it's looking this direction, and it sees a wave moving. It's almost perpendicular, but not quite. Um, so you can't. I mean, you can't. 
we can't draw it perfectly perpendicular. We can't draw it like this. Assuming those are equal above and below. Uh, you can't do that because it's not perfect, perfectly perpendicular. The current is heading more toward the limb lead. Therefore, the up limb, or the positive portion, is going to be greater and the negative portion is going to be smaller. I'll exaggerate that there. Right? So if I look at that biphasic wave, I know the current, if I know the direction, that's one of the things we have to figure out which way the current, maybe the current's flowing this way. But in these examples right now, I'm just, the current's always flowing this way. Okay, and then on the other side of the coin, um, we just drew this one. If the current is flowing slightly away, it's almost biphasic, but you can't draw it perpendicular because it's not perfectly perpendicular. We know that the positive part of the waveform is small and the negative portion is much larger. That tells us the current is moving away. Got that? Um, what about the wave of repolarization? Well, we know that already. For Dr. Doe has taught you that, that the ventricular repolarization is the T wave and the P wave repolarization or the QRS repolarization, which is the ventricular depolarization. For every depolarization, there has to be a repolarization, right? And the QRS complex is mainly ventricular depolarization. The T wave is ventricular repolarization. And the P wave is atrial depolarization. And where is the repolarization? Well, that would be hidden within the QRS complex. You don't actually see that one. But repolarization waves always are the opposite of everything I just taught you. Everything is backwards. So we'll just leave it at that. That's not going to really affect what we're doing today, so I cut a lot of those slides out. So now let's make use of this mean electrical axis. So can you predict which way the wave, the mean electrical axis, the wave of current flowing through the heart, the heart, where was the wave of current started? Who started the wave normally? The SA node did. So the SA node started it. Um, so can you predict which one of these currents is correct? So here's this lead. We'll call it, this is just an imaginary lead A. It's looking straight down. So could it be this wave? Could it be, let's make it green. Is this the correct mean electrical axis? Good, I hear some of you say no. How do you know that's not? How You're correct, this is not it. If it was, you would have, you would have perfectly biphasic waves. The positive part of the wave and the negative part of the wave would be perfectly symmetrical. Is this symmetrical? No, this positive is greater. Right? And the negative is, is tinier. So we actually, what is the law? The law said that if the current, uh, let's see, make this pink. If the current is flowing more toward the lead, then it's going to be greater. The first part of the biphasic wave will be bigger, and the second part will be smaller. So this is the correct answer. Got it? Rewind it, play it again until it sinks in. All right, uh, some fun facts. Norm, the normal axis, the mean electrical axis of the ventricles is somewhere between 0 degrees and 90 degrees on the AAO, the angle of orientation wheel, right? If it's, and remember, if it goes past 0 degrees, if it goes counterclockwise, it's negative territory. Um, so if it, if it pushes into negative territory, that's called a left axis deviation. It's really counterclockwise deviation. If it pushes past 90 degrees to 100 degrees or 120, it's too far clockwise. Um, that is called a right axis deviation. Got it? Okay, this is an important slide. I should have put more stars on here, but I didn't. I made this not too long ago. This is not that old of a slide. so It hasn't accumulated stars yet. Um, but how do you tell 
because some of the questions on the test will just simply say, is this a normal, is this pa does this patient have a normal access? And that's all I'll say. Remember, an AK for access is mean electrical access. And to have a normal mean electrical axis, there's four rules. Uh, rule number one is limb lead one has to be mostly positive. And we're talking about the QRS. Remember I said if it says axis, you assume we're talking about the ventricle uh, axis or the ventricular mean electrical axis. Uh, the peeper AVF will be mostly positive as well. AVR will be mostly negative. And here's the, the kicker here, AVL must be a little bit biphasic. If all these four conditions are met, you have the patient has a normal mean electrical axis. Okay, so let's try it. So is this a normal mean electrical axis in this patient? Well, let's see. So part of the rule says limb lead one should be normal, should be positive and upright. Is that true? Yeah, it's positive and upright. Uh, the peeper, AVF, should be also mostly positive and upright. Is that true? Absolutely. There's AVF. And then it says AVL should be a little bit bi biphasic. And yeah, it's a little bit biphasic. Right? There's a little upper portion. It's not perfectly biphasic, but it's biphasic. And then AVR should be negative. And you can see the QRS complex right here is definitely more negative than positive. There's just that little blip is the only, I mean, it's biphasic, but barely biphasic. So yes, this is a normal axis of the heart. They don't have uh, an axis deviation. Got it? Everything I said. All right, again, a left axis deviation means it's too far counterclockwise in accord with our angle of orientation wheel. And that strongly indicates the patient has left ventricular hypertrophy, probably from uncontrolled hypertension, and they're headed for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, as they, after about 30 years of this, their heart will be gone. And they may be 50, 60 years old, and their life is shortened because they didn't take care of their hypertension. Right axis deviation means it's went too far clockwise, and that almost always indicates right ventricular hypertrophy, probably from Eisenmenger syndrome. Uh, the most common cause of right heart failure and right ventricular hypertrophy is actually left heart failure uh, because the left heart acts as a beaver dam and you get a backup through the lungs into the right heart and it wrecks the right heart. Finding the MEA more precisely, this is the one where I have a lot of questions on the test to see if you can figure this out. So there's some rules. If I ask you, I want to know what the mean electrical axis is within degrees. So tell me the degrees. And you don't have to be perfect, but you have to be fairly close. So there's some rules. We'll go through a couple, three examples, and then we're out of here. Um, so you always find the limb lead that is the most biphasic. And here's a, here's a pro tip right here. Um, stay away from AVR. If you can help it, don't use AVR because everything is backwards than what I'm going to teach you. And usually if AVR is biphasic, limb lead 2 will also because they're, um, they're kind of 180 degrees apart. But they're not always. It all, not always does it work like that. So once you find the, the biphasic wave, you're going to draw the camera that's looking at that biphasic wave. And then you're going to draw perpendicular to that and then you're going to fine-tune it, or then you're going to figure out which way the current is going, and then you're going to fine-tune it. So it's easier just to do examples here. So here's a 52-year-old who comes in with dyspnea, so he's having trouble breathing, especially uh, dyspnea and exertion. When he walks up the stairs, he's panting, he's out of breath. You run an EKG. First, the question is, is the, is the mean electrical axis normal? Well, we can do that right now because we remember our rules, or at least I remember the rules. Limb lead 1 has to be positive. Limb lead 1 is positive. Uh, the peeper has to be positive. That's AVL. Is AVL positive? Or, um, oh, sorry, AVF. Floors, peeper. 
Yep, that's positive. AVR is negative. Has to be negative. Is it negative? Absolutely negative. And then AVL has to be a little bit biphasic. And yeah, it's a little biphasic. So this patient does have a mean electrical axis, but I want to know exactly where it is. Because we know normal, there's a big range of normal. 0 to 90. I want to know per more precisely where it is. So that's part 2. So that's the part we just did. So let's find our first mean electrical axis. So step one is to find the lead that looks the most biphasic. And try to use the limb leads. Try to stay away from AVR if you can help it. So is limb lead one biphasic? No, not really. Not really two, not really three. Now there's only one. I mean, that's a little bump there. But AVL actually is a little bit, it's not perfectly biphasic, but it, it does have a positive portion here. And then it does have a negative portion down here. So yeah, that'll work. So the next step would be to draw the wheel and put in the camera, put in AVL. Right, so I've got a head again as usual, but AVL, AVL is the one. So let's put in the camera, so draw your wheel, put in your camera. So this is the camera view going this way. We know that AVL's angle of orientation is 30, negative 30 degrees. And then after you've put that in, draw a line perfectly perpendicular. Um, well, there's some, remember these, the laws. AVL is perpendicular uh, to limb lead 2. So I could have put these lines a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, so that's a perfectly perpendicular line. So if, if the, if the waveform was perfectly perpendicular, try to draw this perfectly perpendicular, we'd, we'd be done, right? That would be the angle of orientation. Then we just have to figure out which way it's traveling. But it's not perfect, so we're going to have some, to make some adjustments. But anyway, so we have our, 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 per, our perpendicular line set up. So we know that the, the, this patient's flow of current is going this direction, kind of. It's not going this direction because it's not a perfectly biphasic wave, but we're going to adjust that in a minute. But now the question is, is the, is the current flowing this way? Or maybe it's flowing this way. So how do you tell which way it's flowing? Well, look, it's headed right toward limb lead 2. So if the current is heading toward limb lead 2, what would you expect limb lead 2's QRS complex to look like? It's going to be almost all positive, right? We said if a current is heading right at a lead, it's going to draw a positive waveform. So that's what we're going to look for, and if we go back, and look at limb lead 2, sure enough, it's it's almost completely positive. So we, I'm getting ahead of my slides, um, but we know the current is flowing this way. So we know the angle of orientation is about 60 degrees, but we need to kind of fine-tune that a little. And again, there's some pro tips. Remember, these are, I've already said that twice now. Uh, these are AVL and limb lead 2 are perpendicular. They're 90 degrees apart. AVF and limb lead 1 are 90 degrees apart. AVR and limb lead 3 are 90 degrees apart. So the general direction of flow, we just talked about that, and you can read about it again, but we know it's headed here. But that's not the answer yet, because... Why isn't this the answer? Because it's not perfectly biphasic. This is the one we're using, right? Our camera is right here. There's our camera. And it's not perfectly biphasic, so we got to make some adjustments. Um, and so, yeah, so now to fine-tune the mean electrical axis, we look, and we have a little tiny positive waveform and a great big waveform. Now, I told you the definitions. You probably have to go back and look in the slides. Uh, but that means the semi-biphasic current is actually heading f more away from the camera than it is toward the camera. Right, uh, so therefore, we can adjust that. Uh, it, this is this is the camera again. Uh, 
right? And we know it's not perfectly, this would be perfectly biphasic, 60 degrees. So we know the current is heading slightly away from perpendicular. So this would be the answer. So we're, what, at about 70 degrees or so, 75 degrees-ish would be the angle of orientation of this patient. Got it? Pretty simple. Go back and listen. Let's try another one. 62-year-old male comes in, complains of malaise, blurred vision. He's got hypertension. He's not very good at taking his medication. You run an EKG. Here's the EKG. The first question is, is this normal? Does he have a normal axis? Well, what's the rule? The rule is, which you have to memorize, the rule is, to be normal, you have to have, be mostly positive in limb wave 1. That's kind of biphasic, isn't it? It's more biphasic than the last one, but it's still mostly positive. The peeper, AVF, has to be mostly biphasic. Uh-oh. I mean, it has to be mostly um, positive waveform. Did I say biphasic here? It has to be mostly positive. It is biphasic, but it's still mostly positive. That's messed up, right? So that's not mostly positive. That's the positive. That's the negative portion, so no. So this is not a normal axis. And if we look at AVL, that's not biphasic at all. And AV AVR actually looks quite biphasic, doesn't it? And so does limb lead too. So the answer is no. This patient does not have a, a proper axis. The axis is messed up. Question two now is find the mean electrical axis. So how do we do that? Well, um, we find step one, well, you can draw the wheel first if you want to draw the wheel and put in your 0 and your 90 and uh, put in uh, those markers at least. But the next job is to pick out who is the biphasic. What camera are we going to draw on our wheel? And we have two choices. AVR looks almost perfectly biphasic. We could use that if you wanted, but it's everything is backwards in this, so stay away from Limley too. And as our AVR, as I said, if AVR is biphasic, Limley two should be also almost biphasic. And so that's who we're going to use. We're going to use Limb Lead two. So let's draw our wheel and put Limb Lead two in there. Put the camera in there. So I drew the camera, um, and I drew his line of sight is going straight 160. I mean, it could. We're at 60 degrees, I could keep going this way if I wanted to. And then draw a line perfectly perpendicular. And this works out great because we know limb lead 2 is automatically perpendicular to limb lead AVL. So this is what you should draw next. Great. And so we know that the axis is going to look something like this. It's not going to be perfect because we're not perfectly biphasic. If we were per if this was perfectly biphasic, um, if this was perfectly biphasic, we'd be done because the current would be heading this direction. But we still have to know, is the current flowing toward AVL or is it flowing over here more toward limb, limb lead 3? How do you tell? Well, if it's headed toward limb lead 3, I would expect limb lead 3 to be positive waveform. Maybe a little bit but mostly positive waveform. If it's headed toward AVL, which I actually drew in here for you, then I would expect AVL to be mostly positive, and we can already see that is greatly positive. So that tells us the current is flowing this way. Okay, we still don't have the perfect current, but we already, I mean, it was almost biphasic, so really you, you kind of know that we, jumping ahead, we have left axis deviation here, but let's, we'll, We'll do, we'll make it more precise here in a second. All right, everybody got that? Okay, and then now we want to fine tune by looking at our waveform. So if we look closely at our waveform, it does look a little bit less. The positive waveform is a little bit smaller. The negative waveform is a little bit greater. And by definition, that means the current, it's flowing by phasic, or it's par perpendicular but not quite perpendicular it's actually f flowing a little bit more away from the perpendicular away from the camera so the green would show you 
where the flow is. Okay, and that's pretty much the answer. And so that would be what, maybe negative 40 degrees or so. So the mean electrical axis uh, is negative 40 degrees or negative 35 is. And that tells us that we have a counterclockwise, counterclockwise deviation of the axis. You never say counterclockwise. You instead you say you have a left axis deviation. And that's seen in left ventricular hypertrophy. Got it? So left ventricular hypertrophy causes a left axis shift. Uh, atrial flutter can do that. Usually it's hypertension, years of hypertension uh, that have done that. Let's do another one. 56-year-old comes into your office complaining of cough and dyspnea. Uh, conditions work, worsening. He's a heavy smoker. So you take an EKG. Here's the EKG tracing. And first question, is the access normal? So we're getting good at this now. So let's just do it. Uh, so if a normal axis means limb lead 1 has to be mostly positive, is limb lead 1 mostly positive? No way, right? There's the isoelectric line. There's way more below. So that's a mostly negative waveform. There's a little bit above, mostly negative. So already, no. We can stop right there. This is not a normal mean electrical axis. Question 2, what is the mean electrical axis? So we need to pick a waveform to work with and draw our wheel. Um, who do we, who do you want to use? Well, AVR again is biphasic, but if AVR is biphasic, limb lead two is often biphasic. And limb lead two, I mean that's pretty darn close to perfect. Maybe not quite perfect, but it's pretty close to biphasic. To me, it looks like the positive part of the waveform. It's a little bit shorter, and the negative is a little bit greater. So what does that tell us? Once we get down to the end, it means that the wave is heading slightly away from the camera. I'm getting ahead, though. All right, so who's the most biphasic? We did that. We picked limb lead 2. We drew the wheel. We put in our camera limb lead 2. Um, it's really easy to draw a perpendicular line, which would be a perfectly biphasic line, uh, goes right at limb lead AVL because we know these are 90 degrees. These are perpendicular to begin with. Now what we need to do, the drum roll, is the current flowing toward AVL or is it flowing away from AVL? Well, let's look at AVL. If AVL is negative, it's flowing away. If it's positive, it's flowing toward it. Let's go find it. AVL, what do you think? Good. It's mostly negative, isn't it? It's a negative waveform. Look at that. that's all negativeness versus that little positiveness. So yeah. So what does that mean? That means by definition the current must be flowing away from AVL. So we can safely say the current is flowing this way. So I mean really we're done. We don't have the perfect uh, perfect axis or angle of orientation yet. But we already know it's way past 90, right? This is the normal zone here. The current should be flowing somewhere in here. So it's way to the right. So we could even answer the question. I mean, this is right ventricular hypertrophy, right? We have a right axis deviation. All right. But let's fine tune it. Um, so, yeah. So as I said before, uh, the waveform is mostly negative, um, and therefore it would be going away from the current, or away from the camera. I didn't draw the camera, but there's the camera. And you can see it's there would be the perpendicular right there. But it's, it's heading more away uh, because the positive portion is slight and the, the negative portion is greater, that means it's heading away, so we'd have to draw it like that. Um, so it's, uh, what is that? That's 150, that's 120, 30. So it's like what, 130, 130, 135 degrees, um, and that's way to the right. Uh, so this is right axis deviation.
um, 170. How did it get 170? Let's see, 90, because these are 30s. Yeah, that would be right. 150 probably would be better. That's right, that was less negative, I forgot. All right, so anyway, it's way past 120 degrees. So we have right axis deviation. Probably this patient has COPD. Well, he does have COPD. And he has right ventricular hypertrophy and right hypertension, pulmonary hypertension. And we already know we're experts on this. Right ventricular hypertrophy, not as common as left hypertrophy. Left ventricular hypertrophy is more common. And uh, it's seen in patients with left heart failure, as we've already said a million times, and people with COPD and pulmonary hypertension. Also common in patients uh, who fail to get their atrial septal defects or ventricular septal defects repaired. Right? So... Um, yeah, and we talked about Eisenmenger syndrome. I'm not going to go through that. I've talked about that so many times, but yeah. So bottom line, left ventricular hypertrophy causes a right axis deviation. Let's do one more and we'll call it a day. So we have a 62-year-old man with dyspnea. You run an EKG. What do you think? Is the axis normal? Well, let's see. Limb lead 1 has to be positive. That's positive. The peeper has to be positive. AVL is positive. Great. Or, I'm sorry, where's the peeper? Oh, no, that broke the rule, didn't it? Yeah, it's mostly negative. So, no, this is not a normal axis. So, now the question is, let's uh, draw our wheel. So, who are, who's biphasic? This one, we're going to have to use AVR, because AVR is nice and biphasic. It's a little bit backwards, but we can still use it, because Limley 2 just doesn't look... This patient's heart is shaped strangely, or the current is flowing strangely. So we're going to be forced to use AVR. So let's draw our AOO wheel. Draw in AVR, right? Then draw a line perpendicular. Okay, that's easy because AVR and limb lead 3 are perpendicular to each other. They're 90 degrees. So we can draw that. That's going to be our axis, give or take a little. And the question is, which way is this running? Is the current running this way? Or is the current running this way? And, well, let's limb lead 2 or limb lead 3 will tell us the story, won't it? Um, so by looking at limb lead 3, we can see that it is negative. So that means the current must be running away from it. Right? So there is the direction of current flow. And, I mean, we're really done. Because we can adjust it. Maybe it'll go this way a little. Maybe it'll go that way a little. Um, but we're way past zero. So this is left axis deviation. It's going to be past negative 30. But just to be precise, let's, let's make this more perfect. So if we look at the waveform here, it does look almost perfectly biphasic to me. Um, but to me, it looks like so this would be the, normally that's the upper portion, but it, it, it still works the same principle. Uh, it looks like this is not quite as great. The first part of the wave is not quite as great, and the second part is greater. So that would, be, that would mean the current is heading away slightly. And see, it doesn't make that much difference, really. Um, so it's maybe, what, 100 and or it's negative 45 degrees-ish, maybe num negative 50 degrees-ish or so. I said a negative 60 is pushing it. The bottom line is it's left ventricular hypertrophy, and we have a left axis deviation. All right, yeah, that's, it's about negative 45. That was, that shouldn't be there. A negative 60. Negative 45 is a better answer. Okay, so go through that again. I know that's that's kind of hard. I don't think you've done that before. Um, and expect those to be on the test. See you later.